Good evening, everybody out there in PLD land. Thank you so much for coming to join us. Good evening, good morning. Whatever time it is, oh my Lord. Hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> I am so sorry. You just got hit with an advert. I usually have those switched off somewhere I've messed up. I do that a lot. Uh, welcome to another PLD feedback challenge. If you're not sure what PLD is, you've just discovered this. PLD is a series of photographic creative challenges. If you'd like to find out more, there is a link in the description area below. Interesting that that ad should show up. Jane, thank you so much for your donation and thank you for your appreciation. Uh, Jane Barnes, I noticed in the comments just before we went live, Jane was asking whether or not uh, chat added to revenue stream. Actually, there is no revenue stream on these because usually I have ads switched off. <clears throat> the only revenue stream that comes in is if somebody wants to buy a sticker to help support the PLD group, etc. Um, or a sponsored question. And of course, anyone who makes some regular donations to keep it going. Thank you very much indeed. It's always really exciting for me to see you regular stalwart names in the weight room as I'm kind of getting set up and hoping it all works okay. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you all for being you and thank you for supporting PLD. So what have we got in store tonight? It was the passion challenge. Not an easy thing to do. Definitely not an easy thing to do. Um, I also just wanted to mention, I, uh, Glyn Haskins, just for you, I chose that picture. Passion. My passion, of course, are motorbikes. And I did it just for you. And I'm so glad to see your comment earlier on when we were in the weight room going, I hope there aren't any motorbikes. <laughs> How can you not love a 70-year-old motorbike like that? Wonderful old thing. And it goes and everything works. It's perfect. If I work as well as that when I'm 70, I'll be delighted. <clears throat> I also want to share a bit of a a PLD member win with all of you. Um, I had a really lovely email from David Cunningham um, who expressed some lovely comments. Thank you so much for those, David. But uh, I just want to share some of the salient points because I think we need to give David Cunningham a way a high five because uh, he just said he's been um, an early participant in PLD right from the beginning and in more recent weeks after his success in one of our challenges, he's been working through my seven building blocks of photography course, which teaches you how to think like a photographer rather than camera technique. It's the thought process. That's what the seven building blocks is. There's a link in the description area below if anyone wants to go find out more about it or try a free sample. Now, David is a Navy veteran and he was recently attending a memorial for uh, Far East prisoners of war. Um, and he was obviously shooting pictures <clears throat> uh, he, he sent his pictures to the organisers to say, you know, what do you think? You know, if there's any here that are of any use to you. Um, and they have commissioned him to be the official photographer at the next one. So good on you, David. That's really exciting news. And thank you for sharing it with all of us. And I hope you don't mind me sharing it with everyone else. Um, so that's really cool. He also went on to say he feels he's part of a community and look forward to these sessions every other Thursday. The community is you guys. That's you making that happen. So round of applause and high five to everybody here. Thank you all for being you. What else have we got? <clears throat> Probably not a lot else going on here at the moment. Uh, so why don't we go and have a look at some of your pictures. If anyone has any questions, please, of course, ask them along the way. You are more than welcome to ask me anything you like. This is a bit of an AMA as well as a feedback session. Passion, not an easy thing to photograph. The next challenge is considerably simpler and it will be live about 10 to 15 minutes after we finish this live session. Those of you who are signed up on the mailing list, you will, of course, get an email <clears throat> with a little bit of extra good stuff in there and a link explaining a bit more about the challenge. Otherwise, of course, there is a link in the description area below um, for people to find out more about it. So let's go and have a look. What I'm going to do this time is share my screen and we're just going to have a look through the album because in all honesty, there weren't that many entries this time. Uh, understandably so because... Let's face it, it is holiday time, isn't it? Oh, I've got a message from my sister-in-law, so I need to just get rid of that. 
Um, it is, of course, holiday time, isn't it? And people have got other things to go and do. So let's just share my screen with you. That's the wrong screen. That is my YouTube control panel. We'll get there in a minute. Here it is. <clears throat> just for you, of course, Glyn. Um, so let's just have a little look at some of the pictures. Well, I'm just going to choose a few at random. Maybe give you a bit of feedback. Just talk a little bit about some of these pictures because there really are some gorgeous images here. If I glance over yours and don't say anything, please don't take that personally. Um, there are many images there. I, I'm just going to choose a few to give a bit of feedback on and just see uh, if we can do a bit for everybody in the group. Sam, I liked your picture here. Now I'm getting messages from Estra Suarez. <laughs> Go away, Estrus. I love you to bits, man. <clears throat> uh, Sam, I think it's a great picture, and I totally get it. One of your passions, you know, is uh, photos of your family. I love your composition here. I think this works really, really well. No sound. Really? <sighs> okay. Why is there no sound? You're right. Can anybody else hear me? <clears throat> I'm getting no sound messages. I've got a few. Sound is fine. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. That should all be working fine. Let's bring that back. Good. Thank you, everyone, for just confirming that. Sorry, I didn't see your name. I don't know who it was who said the sound wasn't working. It appears that it is. <clears throat> Sam, I love this picture, and I like the way you framed it. Um, I really do. Just having the little pair of eyes looking at you and the little sparkle in those eyes. It's a really nice shot. How could it be improved? Um, I just think there's probably a little bit too much going on around the room. The blue on the right is kind of distracting. Let's do our kind of, let's, let's, let's kind of see what we can do. Now, I think, you see, when we, if you kind of make one of, you know, these things, you know what I'm talking about, one of these things. And just kind of crop it in a little bit. Lose the blue and lose the person sitting next to the little boy. So you're just looking at the squares of the chair and that little face peeping through. I don't know what you, what do you think, guys? If you kind of crop it like that, what I'm seeing from here, I think is really, really strong because the distractions aren't there. It's a great idea. A square crop would work. Any old <clears throat> crop would work. I just think maybe a slightly longer focal length or a step forward would have really, really helped. Just just lose the, the, the person on the left looking at a phone and, and the blue things. You can just kind of, you could just move forward a bit when you took the shot or maybe zoom the lens in just a tiny bit because then those squares and that little boy, just those beautiful eyes peeping through, it becomes a much, much stronger picture. But yes, it's a really nice shot nonetheless. What else have we got going on here? Um, now, Caroline, I get it. This is always a difficult thing. As I was saying, passion is such a hard thing to try and interpret or, of course, to photograph because how do you bring that into an image? I get it. You have a passion for garlic. I get it. But the problem here is the picture isn't giving passion to us whereas like Sam's picture we had those eyes they're kind of a light they show love they show passion they show a bit of an emotion <clears throat> to try and get passion into an inanimate object such as a bulb of garlic is a difficult thing to do I like your picture though nonetheless I can see you've put some work into this in how you've got your clothes of garlic laid out in the light which is coming from, you know, the top, at the top of our picture here. It's coming down through the shot, isn't it? Um, I totally get that. I can see you put some work into it. I think maybe a little bit more depth of field might have helped. I'm not sure it's working so much to have the tip of one bulb sharp and the other one soft in this case. It might have been better if they were both sharp. But getting the, that passion message across, we get it. Yes, you love garlic. But we're not kind of feeling that passion. Maybe if we, if we were seeing you you doing something with it in the shape of food or cooking or something like that. Um, but nonetheless, great effort. I love your use of light and I love your dedication to enter the challenge. What else have we got going on here? Let's have a look at this one of Darren's. 
It's a great bit of street sort of photography, Darren. Um, and I love a bit of street photography. And I love, you know, this guy, his passion is to sit there and, and feed the birds, feed the gulls. Is this you? Is this a selfie? I don't know if you're with us here. <clears throat> Always interesting to know. Great exposure. Technically, of course, everything is spot on. It's nice and sharp front to back. Um, I think what we're missing is maybe a little moment of action of being able to capture a moment. Maybe when one of these birds, the pigeons or the gulls, was taking a bit of food from uh, this chap's hand. Um, that would have been really, really good. Maybe if there was sort of some form of emotion uh, coming from this guy so that, so that we can see that he is passionate, that, that there is something that is lighting his light, that is floating his boat. These are, the, these are the ways you would bring an emotion into a picture. It's interesting, as I said, I got a Facebook message suddenly pop up from Estra Suarez, and some of you have, would have met him when he's spoken to us. He's a multiple Pulitzer Award-winning photojournalist. Um, you know, and he was a master of capturing emotion in photos. He is so, so good at it. Have a look and, and see some of his images. Do a Google search, um, Estra Suarez. Uh, Estras M. Suarez and have a look at some of his pictures. Let's see what you think. Is anyone else having a problem with streaming? I'm seeing that Sue Owen says she's got a problem. It should be streaming at 720 Sue and my upload speed from here is about 25 meg so we should be absolutely fine. Um, sorry I can't help I don't know what it is. 720 yeah it should be coming in at 720. Um, yeah, Instagram. Oh, what, Esther Suarez, Instagram. Yeah, absolutely, that is a good idea. Good, I'm glad everyone looks to be good. Sorry, I can't help. So, lovely image, Darren. Nice idea, beautifully sharp. I love the black and white. I like the lights. I like the two guys on the bench on the other side. The bit that's missing, that, that passion element, you're showing us something that you or somebody is passionate about, but we're not feeling the passion coming out of the picture. In this case, it's one of those little decisive moments an interaction between the man and the girl, or perhaps an emotion on this person's face. What else have we got going on here? Again, Monica, this is such a beautiful picture. Um, you know, a passion for music. I totally get it. Um, great colors, very, very sharp. Very nice, natural lighting. I totally get this around these musicians. Um, the bit, again, it, this is a hard thing to do, is, is the passion. I get it. You have the passion for this music. And it is a lovely picture. What we're not feeling is that passion, that emotional part coming out. The guy on the violin, kind of the way he's looking at you, it, his eyes are, almost look like, will you stop taking pictures? <laughs> Rather than a sort of a, like, ah, oh, you know, lost in it, eyes closed, just sort of like, ah, oh, this is just great. You know those little moments that musicians have? Um, that's the one that will, that will help you bring out the passion because technically you've got a gorgeous picture, great light. It is a lovely shot. <clears throat> it's that one little tiny element and I know I'm being hard, I'm being your coach. Um, and uh, Please don't take offence, anyone, because it is a great shot. What else we got going on in here? Um, Yvonne, let's just take a look at your woodland because another beautiful picture. I've just realised where it is. <laughs> Not far from me, so aren't you a local Yvonne if you're here? Interesting. <clears throat> the peace and tranquility of nature. Yeah, I totally get it. It's one of your passions. I totally get it. And, and this is probably one of the hardest things to bring a feeling of passion to an image because, again, you've got a beautiful picture. These little pools of light going on and this little rill of water coming down there. This is your passion. I totally get it. You're in Hinton. Okay, down the road near the cat and fiddle. <laughs> yeah, I know where you are. Excellent. I hope if we bump if you see me somewhere, come say hello. It's the same for anybody. You know, if any of you guys see me wandering around somewhere, just come say hello. It's always lovely to meet you for real. So yes, <clears throat> beautiful picture from Expert. I love the light. I love, you know, technically absolutely spot on, perfect exposure, beautifully sharp, front to back sharpness. The light coming through those leaves is beautiful. Um, it is a lovely picture. Please don't think it isn't. It's a very hard thing to do to try and bring 
that emotion of passion, but you've come really, really close because you have used the light so well. Uh, it's a beautiful shot. What else have we got here? I love this one here. I think this is just such great fun. Um, <laughs> what could be more passionate? You know, you watch these guys with these traction engines and steam engines and things. Um, and yeah, their passion is for steam. I don't know if anybody ever watched an old fellow called Fred Dibner talking about his traction engines in television series here in England a few years back. It's still on YouTube. It's like, it's just amazing listening to him. Look at the guy's eyes. Look at the look in his eyes. It's really exciting. Nice picture. DPR bred in. I don't believe we've met. Um, welcome and thank you for being here. It is a lovely shot. It is a lovely shot. How could it be improved? It's not quite sharp on our uh, steam engine or traction engine driver's eyes. Also, I can't help but wonder, would it be possible for you to have a slightly different angle? It's like, how many people here knew that this was a steamroller or a traction engine? Just, just, a, just a Y for yes or an N for no in the comments, please. Because I'm just interested to know. I know what these things are because I kind of love them. Um, I think they're amazing, but not everybody necessarily does. Um, okay, so most people did. We're getting a lot of, a lot of Ys, a lot of yeses, one or two no's. Yeah, got it. There are one or two no's. Yeah, you wouldn't necessarily have known what it was that this guy was doing. Um, so yeah, maybe a little bit more of what it is that he's passionate about could have worked. Possibly, I don't know, <clears throat> if he's on the move, difficult for you to get in close because these things are pretty dangerous. Uh, but I think that could have sort of helped bring it to life just that bit more. But you really have caught the passion in this guy's face. You really have. Forgive me, I have to attend to something which is popping up over here on my check screen. I need to just make sure that doesn't keep going on because it is going to be a real distraction. Bear with me just a moment. Oh, I'll get there in a minute. Forgive me about this. Okay, I think this is going to be a bit of a nuisance. I need to stop this. There's something flashing all over my other screen. <clears throat> this is very unprofessional of me. Please forgive me. Robert Warner just said, love that he is oily. Yeah, totally. Totally. It's great, isn't it? Just to be able to see, you know, what someone is doing. It is like me when I go in my motorbike shed. Sorry, Glenn. I'm not supposed to talk about them, am I? Let's move on. Let's go have a look somewhere else. <clears throat> Linda O'Neill. Again, it's like, yeah, that passion for walking, and I totally get how you feel <clears throat> sitting here in the sunshine on this path, winding its way up through the hills. I totally get it, and your, the boots and all the rest of it. The light isn't doing you a huge amount of favours here because it is quite hard, and, and coming, it's coming from slightly in front, but it is a bit hard. I think it's a good effort and technically really nicely well done. It's simple. We haven't got too much going on, too many colours. I think, again, trying to bring passion and emotion into a picture is such a difficult thing to do. Um, but it is a hard thing to do. Um, I don't know what to say, really. How could it be improved? Maybe if you were walking with someone, if that someone was coming down the path towards you or something like that. I think that could have helped a lot. Um, it's that human emotion, that's the bit we're missing. We get that walking and hiking in the countryside is your passion, but technically great image, really well, really well done. Nice and sharp, perfectly exposed. I thought this was interesting, Mr. Barton. <clears throat> I do think this is an interesting picture. Um, and I get it, music is your passion, and you, you've done a pretty good job here, so I'm intrigued to know, was this a multiple exposure or is it a combined in, in, in post-production? Either way, you know, I do like it. There is no question. It's kind of quite dreamy, isn't it? We've got multiple layers within this image. I like the way you've got the, the keys in the base image absolutely perfectly straight. I think that's really kind of interesting. 
And then we got the interlacing of the sheet music and the other keys. Is this a triple exposure? Is it a um, is it a is a um, what is the word I'm trying to say? Um, yeah, uh, 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 multiple layer in Photoshop or something. Doesn't matter. It does work. It does work. And I think the dreaminess of it is is a very clever way to have been able to bring a feeling of emotion to this. I think it is uh, absolutely great. What else? Here's something which I think is kind of interesting as well. Um, passion for building and restoring bicycles. Um, yeah, this is kind of intriguing and I get it. Because, you know, yeah, I, I like going in the shed and fiddling with spanners and making things too. What's missing here? I'm not sure yet. Again, Kevin, I get it. It's your passion. I think black and white is good. I think that works really well. I like your use of a shallow depth of field to sort of really concentrate on the headstock of this um, bicycle. It looks like it is quite an old one. It really does. <clears throat> I think it's probably just a little bit busy in the background. I can, we can see the gas bottles, but I think it's where the, the torch, which is hooking over the frame, is kind of colliding with the top. Um, maybe if you could have had a lead light or something, backlighting. So there's a bit of light coming towards the viewer rather than it all just sort of coming down. Um, have we got a technical problem? I can see someone saying about delays, Jane. I get paranoid about this stuff because we do often have things go wrong and I don't know why because we have got, oh my dear, I'm going to have to stop that. Something is weird going on on the other screen. Forgive me. I'm sorry about this. Lovely, lovely attempt at getting it right. I get it. It's your passion. I think the light coming towards could have helped a bit. Not quite so busy in the, uh, the top. Uh, where the top of the gas bottle is. I think that could have definitely helped. <clears throat> what else we got going on in here? Oh, dare I click on a motorcycle picture at the risk. Sorry, Glenn, just make yourself a cup of tea for a couple of minutes. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. You will survive. Oh, and by the way, Glenn, I think motorbikes per se are boring. I completely agree with you in the same way I think cameras are boring. What is interesting is what you can do with them. That's what I think is the interesting part. Passion. I think you have done a really great job here, uh, Tom. This isn't an easy capture by a long stretch. <clears throat> These guys are, are flying along at very high speed. It is a real skill to capture them. As a motorcyclist, yeah, I kind of get it. I can see how this guy's hanging off the bike and all the rest of it. And to do this and to endanger your life at this level, there is passion there. There absolutely has to be <clears throat> passion and commitment to want to do this. I quite like the way you've used black and white because I can imagine the background is very colorful, probably a bit distracting, but you have used a wide aperture. You've got a shallower depth of field and the background is just going soft. You've got a very fast shutter speed, which is freezing that movement. Um, I think it's a very, very powerful and accomplished image, Tom. I really do. And, and I am getting the body language of, of the guy, the, the racer, um, you know, and, and his passion for what he's doing. Or she, I don't know, could be, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> I think it's a really cool image. Nicely done, Tom. Let's have a little look a little bit further. Marie, I want to just look at this one for a moment because I think there's a lot of passion going on here. <clears throat> a musician singing the blues. What could be more passionate than a musician singing the blues? Musicians are passionate creatures. Um, and it's, we, you've caught this expression in the eyes. Again, it's that, you know, look, the eyes are closed. Look, look at his body language. Look at, this guy's lost in what he's doing and what he's singing. He, the rest of the world isn't there. The passion is definitely coming through. You've used a shallow depth of field. Great job. So you're separating out the background from the subject. I think it is very, very well done. I really do. <clears throat> How could it be improved? I'm not sure. I think black and white works really well. On my screen, I think it might look good a little bit darker. I'm sorry I didn't take it any further in, in this challenge. 
but you certainly did a very good job of capturing someone's passion for something that they do. Um, Robert Warner said, a proper guitarist, no plectrum. Mm. I can play Smoke on the Water on one string. I am hopeless at this sort of thing. <clears throat> now here, of course, Karen, you are a very accomplished photographer. We already know this. And you've got a really gorgeous picture. Uh, and you are really into your macro photography, as many of, of you guys are. And some of you are, are extremely good at it. Now, you know, <clears throat> capturing this image, you know, it's a little fly and just look at it. It's, it's just a whole new world, isn't it? It works brilliantly because the colors are simple. Look, there's lots and lots of greens. The fly is positioned against a brighter background. It's a very well composed and beautifully done image. I am absolutely not knocking it. And I get that you have a passion for your macro photography. But again, the hard part with this stuff is, uh, of course, getting that passion to be in the picture. So the viewer looks at a picture and goes, yeah, I can really feel the passion coming out of here. These challenges are not hard. This is a really, really tough one. Please don't think it's easy and please don't think I'm, you know, mocking anyone because I'm not. This is a really hard thing to do. <coughs> this is a beautiful photograph. <coughs> Great light. Everything is completely awesome. Well done, Mary. What else? Let's have a look at this one here. Jan. My passion is looking at nature and seeing something maybe no one else might see. Really nice little comment. Now, I don't read the comments when I go through and do the judging. But there is something about this cloud. With Look at those subtle little light rays. Let me just move that cursor, that mouse out the way. Look at those little subtle light rays. <clears throat> Let me just check. This thing's doing crazy things. Forgive me. I'll get there in a minute. Here we go. There we go. Oh, I've got to stop this thing doing what it's doing. Good. <clears throat> Apologies. These light rays coming out of the clouds. There is a little bit of an emotion going on here. Uh, who said just said that? Sharon Grigg just said, I see a face. Does anyone else see a face? Just a, a Y or an N, yes or no? Does anyone else see a face? I'm just intrigued. Does anyone see a face? Yes, yes, yes. We've got quite a lot of, quite a lot of yeses going on. It's interesting because human beings, we are programmed to see other human beings. We are pre-programmed to see faces in pieces of toast and clouds and all these other places and all these other things. It's part of our evolutionary history of, of keeping ourselves safe. You know, always oh, another human being. Do I need to go to them for help or do I need to run the other way because they might try and kill me and steal my things? <coughs> Interestingly, I never see faces in clouds and shapes and pieces of toast and things, but I did see one in this, so that's kind of interesting. Passion. I think the face probably helps with that and those those subtle rays of light coming out into this humid air it's a really intriguing picture jan i do think it's interesting i like the way you've noticed it and and it's just these rays of light there is a bit of a passionate feeling i i think that i get from it now of course everything is subjective what i'm saying i may, may or may not feel passion from someone's picture or i may feel loads from from another and of course, you guys may think, I don't know what you're on about. Maybe it's something else. <clears throat> Maybe you don't. Maybe you do. Photography is subjective, and that's why there's no right or wrong. But I think it's a great picture, Jan. Great exposure. Yeah, technically all spot on. And I love those little subtle rays of light. Glynn saw a teddy bear at the top. And there are so many beautiful pictures going on in here and interesting, intriguing pictures that, you know, it is a difficult one. This is one which I found really intriguing. Paul, Paul Lynn. <clears throat> as, as a photograph, I find things like this intriguing. Why are they there? They make me ask question and, and ask stories. Um, what did you say? Passion for photographing the absurd. Got it. Your passion is photographing the absurd. And I like this picture a lot as a picture. 
<clears throat> we've got these lines. Let me have a swig of water. Um, on on you know the boardwalk on the timbers and this I guess it's a, a headband. It's probably something like you know this thing I got dangling around my wrist, which I use either as a COVID mask if I have to go in the shop or, or whatever. It's a multi-purpose thing, but it's actually a headband. I think it's an intriguing image. I think the light is really nice. The way the light is sort of coming at an angle from the side, the way you've so carefully composed it, used a shallow depth of field, if you're not sure what I'm on about when I say about shallow depths of field, or how you control those things. Go and have a look at my masterclass in photography, which will answer all of those questions. It is a completely new course, 10 months in the making. <clears throat> four weeks online, built-in coaching, all that kind of stuff. Go and have a look, try a free sample. It will answer those sorts of questions. I think it's a great picture, Paul. I really like it. And I get it's your passion to photograph the absurd, but once again, I'm afraid, my friend, I'm not getting passion come out of the picture. It is a hard thing to do. It is a hard thing to put off. It really is. Um, another one, you see, Sonia, I love this picture. It's another picture I really like, and I get it. You have a passion for nature. And I love the pastel nature of this picture as a picture to give feedback and a, and a critique. Yeah, I think it is a, I love it. I like the lines and the shapes. I love your composition, the way you've put this shot together. The way we've got these sort of three main elements and then a fourth little spiky one in the lower right corner. I like the soft pastel colours that are going on here as well. It just sort of works for this. I don't know why. Why are some pictures engaging? What do you think, guys? <clears throat> why are some pictures engaging? For me, this really engages me. I just like looking at it. I like the shapes. I like the natural shapes against the man-made shapes. I think it's very well composed, well put together. The pastel thing works. Um, I get it. You have a passion for nature but I'm afraid I'm not feeling your passion come out of the picture. It's a lovely picture, but I'm not feeling the passion. What else we got here? This one I think is great. Ahmed. <clears throat> yeah, I totally get the passion element here. I really do. Um, you know, there's nothing kind of lovelier, is there, than when you see an elderly couple holding hands or someone holding hands with their mum, or, or whatever. It's just a, a really lovely, warm human gesture. I like your composition. I, I think the light is really nice. Maybe you could have given it just a touch more space, but you have captured a feeling of passion within an image. How could it be improved? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know what to say, but I, I think it is a really... It's, it's quite a touching image. It's quite a touching picture. Black and white, I think, was absolutely the right way to go. The light you're using here, the, the light coming towards the camera, that little bit, uh, pu putting the shape and texture onto the fingers and bringing out the wrinkles. What a lovely shot of love for your mum. <laughs> Erendira Law, hello. I don't know if we've met. I don't recognize your name, but welcome and thank you for coming. <clears throat> happy, beautiful sunflowers. Yes, I get it. There is a happiness going on in your picture here. There's something about sunflowers. Does anyone else think sunflowers? Does anyone else get happy when they see sunflowers? Um, does anyone else sort of see sunflowers and think, yeah, it just feels good. There's something about sunflowers. They're smiley plants, aren't they? Or in my opinion, they are. And I love the way you've composed this um, with the two side by side next to each other. I think it's, it's really rather fun the way we're just looking at them. There's something like two big smiley eyes going on here and it kind of makes me smile. <clears throat> you have done a pretty good job actually of taking something very, very simple and somehow making a happy picture out of it. And, and that's quite a thing I think to do. Um, because, forgive me for saying this, there are some much more accomplished photographs that we've seen already tonight, technically, and all that kind of stuff. What this one has got is somehow that little giggly feeling, that little sunshine summer feeling. How could it be improved? I think 
light would have helped a bit. The light is very, very soft, and, and maybe if there was a bit of light coming through from behind or something, or a little bit of soft directional light, maybe, but I'm not really knocking it. I think possibly a bit more contrast, but again, nah. Technically, it's really good. On my screen, it looks just a tiny, weeny bit soft, but I'm not gonna go on about that. That could be a Facebook compression thing. I'm just looking at some of your comments just to see what other people um, have to say about it. Because uh, it's always interesting. We all have our own opinions, you know, what other what anyone says. What was it Ace K said? I like, I like how the composition is a bit lowered, makes them look slightly goofy. Yeah, I get it. There is. There's something goofy, something happy. Erin Deera, great job. <clears throat> This one I found kind of puzzling. Niger, um, inside a snail shell, macro. Yeah, again, it's kind of like you have a passion for macro photography. And what I think is missing here is, is again, that passion. It's not an easy thing to do. Could you bring passion to looking at the inside of a snail shell? Possibly. But that's not an easy thing to do, and I salute you for tackling this as, as a project, for this challenge, I really do. The light is really difficult. My only thing, thing I can think that might have helped you would be if you could light the shell. So the light is coming through the shell, not at the shell. What do I mean by that? An LED torch, something like that, something quite strong, quite powerful with a narrow beam. I don't know. Is it possible to, to shine a little torch down a little tube? This is what so much of photography is, um, is thinking up ways to do things. It's not necessarily the camera. It's thinking up ways to do things. That's what my seven building blocks of photography is all about. The thought process behind the picture, the questions we need to ask ourselves. How do I want this to look? How am I going to achieve that? What if I do this? How do I want that? And you reverse engineer through that thinking, and that tells you the settings, because settings don't give you pictures. Pictures tell you the settings once you know how to think them through. I think if the light was probably coming through a tube, if you had found a little tube or something shone a strong LED, something that you could possibly hide behind the shell, it would need to be pretty small run a bit of light through it, you might have been able to light the shell up so it's like backlit because there is a translucency to shells. Generally speaking, I do like a lot of space around a picture. I get that. Um, and there is quite a lot of space around this picture. I just can't help. Let me just move that mouse anyway. Um, I think possibly in this case, you could maybe have gone in a little bit closer um, and possibly positioned it in the middle, in this case. I know there's the thought, well, maybe I should stick it on a third or something, but it's a tough one. It is a tough one. What do you think, guys? Oh, Robert Warner had a suggestion. How about side light? Yeah, possibly. Um, Bob Williams said, put a do not disturb note on the shell. Yeah, that would sort of bring some humor to it, definitely. Thing is to remember when we're, when we're doing these things is, is passion. It is an exercise in in interpretation. These things are not easy. This is why I so take my hat off to all of you for doing these. When um, I run my, you know, masterclass workshops on location things, the one coming up in Edinburgh uh, in a few weeks' time, <clears throat> be warned, you will be given something similar to this, a list of seemingly impossible ideas to go and photograph. And everyone looks at me and goes, what are you talking about? We do this for real. It's not an easy thing, but it's a great exercise. One of the reasons I salute you so much for getting stuck into what we're doing. <laughs> Glitz and fry it in a little bit of butter. <laughs> what else we got going on in here? Um, James Cavaretto. A ghost from childhood long ago. Yeah, passion for those toys and things. Wow, yeah, I remember lots of my mates had some of these these things, these little electric trains. They were so expensive, probably even more expensive now. Again, what I'm missing here is the, the passion coming out of the picture. I get it, it's your passion, but is the picture saying to someone else, passion? This probably would have made quite an interesting close-up shot if you could have photographed from a slightly strange angle. Would it have become passion? I don't know. Technically, of course, 
it's great. Yes, it's sharp, it's correctly exposed. There is no sort of blur or movement to it. Forgive me, James, but <clears throat> what we've got here is a picture of a train, but we're not really feeling anything about the train or maybe, you know, your childhood of, of when you were playing with that train. Um, how would you bring that into the shot? It's a difficult thing to do. Maybe having someone else involved with it. Maybe, I don't know. Um, it's a hard thing to do. And I get it. This is your passion. And as we get older, we all start thinking back to our childhood and what we had and what we haven't got anymore and <clears throat> wanting it back. Uh, I get it. It's so hard to impart a personal emotion about something we are emotional about to another human being through a photograph. But yeah, good effort. Thank you for giving it your best shot. This one I think is really interesting, Mr. Martin. Paul Martin. Um, that's interesting. Sorry, Sharon was just saying about James' picture of you know the train. Yes, maybe with you in it. That could have been a really interesting one. That's a great idea, Sharon. Um, it's kind of like maybe your hand holding the train. You know, something like that could you maybe use a self-timer. You, you, one, one idea always begets another. That You've set a little train of thought going there, there train. <laughs> no pun intended, Sharon. You know, maybe your hand holding the train. That could have been quite interesting because then you, you're creating that link, that connection between you and the thing that you're passionate about. Um, with just some ideas, but totally get it. And it was a very technically accomplished picture. Thank you for that idea there, Sharon. It's always worth talking to people about. It. It's what this group is about. You know, when you're in the group, and somebody's, you know, I, I see conversations between you saying things like, um, uh, you know, I've got this idea, what do you think? How can I do it? And I love the way you support each other and throw ideas back at each other and, and, and evolve ideas together. I just think it's awesome. <clears throat> and I'm very proud to be part of it. Paul Martin, yeah. You know, this kind of, of what's it called? Is it, is it crochet or needlepoint or something? Um, yes, it's hand embroidery. It is such a, a, a passion for so many people. And there is so much beautiful work that can come out of this. You're, you've chosen something, I get it, that is a passion. I think we all understand that this is something that is passionate or, or something to be passionate about. I like the light. I like the way you've got side light coming in. I looks to me like it's probably a mixture of daylight and artificial lights. There's a bit of yellow in there, but I don't mind that. I quite like the side lights showing those textures up. The thing which I think is slightly missing is, um, what does it say there? Uh, project for teaching project for your wife. So if this is your wife, Paul. Um, what's missing is her other hand. <laughs> Forgive me. I know it possibly sounds like I'm being facetious, but I think, there's something uncomfortable about just the one hand. Maybe if, if I don't know, I, I, I haven't done this, forgive me, am I imagining things? I think I've seen people sort of, you know, like supporting from beneath, maybe pushing up, maybe if we could sort of see the other arm going underneath and pushing up, it might have just helped. Um, I dare say you probably tried all sorts of different ideas and ways of going about it to see if you could bring in the other hand and maybe it felt cluttered, but great effort. And again, of course, technically you've done a great job. Exposure, colors, light, really great. What else have we got going on here? Let's have a look at this one, Steve. Steve's outdoors. <clears throat> Two of your passions, mountain biking and black and white photography. Ah, it's a selfie, this is you, cool. Difficult shot to do, again, to bring a, a sense of power. Um, to the picture and, and that sense of passion. Um, it's a tricky one technically because of getting the shutter speed fast enough to freeze it. And of course, if it's a selfie of sorts, then you've got a bit of a problem in, in trying to do it. And I salute you for the amount of work and effort you must have put into that for being there and probably having to do this many times over. I think the thing is your expression. We're not getting a passion thing from your expression. <laughs> At that precise moment that this, this shot went off, we're kind of getting, uh, hey, you're there. Hey, Steve, took nearly 90 shots to get it. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
And I so respect your perseverance for doing this 90 times. Listen to that, guys. Steve did this over and over and over 90 times. Photography is rarely a drive-by shooting. It's rarely, uh, sometimes it is. It's a lucky moment. It's a quick reaction. But very often, it is an awful lot of effort and work. And good on you, Steve, for doing that. Right, back to what I was saying. I now feel uncomfortable because you're there. <laughs> trying to not hit, hit, trying not to hit the camera or the log nearby. I get it. Last thing you want to do is go flying off sideways on a log. I think the thing here, Steve, is we're not getting passion coming out of you. I'm really coaching hard on the passion, on the emotion bit this time. Uh, your expression, actually, what you've just said kind of explains it. Your expression kind of says, um, "Whoa, I hope I don't hit that log or slide over or knock the camera over." Um, rather than going. This is awesome. I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, great attempt, great light. I love the light coming through the trees. I think the use of black and white works really, really well. Very hard thing to do as a selfie, so you have my absolute um, appreciation for giving it a go, as you have. This, I thought, was interesting from Sue Owen. Red and green, best mates. Um, yeah, interesting. And what are we saying here, Sue? Are we saying um, you have a passion for red paint? I, I love the, the use of complementary colours, but I'm, I wasn't quite sure where you were going with it. Um, what have we got in some of these comments? Let's have a quick look, just in case I'm missing something. That is a very me thing to do. These droplets of red on the green photos, Tory vibes. I don't know if you're here, Tory. Um, we haven't seen a Tory hunter for a while. Come on, Tory, come back and horrify us with something amazing. Um, I know, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm missing something here. Forgive me, Sue, I'm missing something here. I love your use of complementary colors. I think you're saying you've got a passion for red paint. I get the connection between red and passion, you know, the color of love and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, good effort, technically, yeah, well done. Forgive me, it doesn't quite work. It's, it's a bit of a loose, loose connection here. Please don't be offended by that. But good effort, and really, thank you for getting stuck in and giving it a go. Hey, Sue, there you are. It was a bit of a spare of the moment thing, to be honest. <laughs> And that's awesome. You did a spur of the moment thing and you delivered something instead of nothing. And for that, what can you do but respect? Passion is getting hubby to paint things. Yeah, oh, my idea of hell. If I've led a bad life and I go to hell and I'm greeted at the gates, they will hand me a tin of paint and a roller and some filler and some sandpaper and some shelves to put up. Ugh. I hate that stuff. Anyway, what else can we look at here? Well, obviously, I think we have to look at this amazing picture from Emma Rawls, don't we? Um, this is just such good fun. Thanks, Emma, for giving us a smile. Um, it's not very often my other half wants to get involved. Well, he obviously did here, exhibitionist. Uh, good man, good man, and thanks for sharing this one. Um, Uh, thanks for sharing this one. I think it's absolutely splendid and a whole part of fun. Um, yeah, I get it. Your passion. Ladies, can you see why? <laughs> Fantastic. Right, let's move on. Thank you for sharing that one there. This one from Phil Saunders Hall. I think this was a really, really well taken and accomplished image, Phil. Um, I really do. What would you say is, what makes that image, this is a genuine question for everyone, what is it that makes this image interesting? It's a gun. I have no interest in guns particularly. Um, I did have when I was a kid, I had a lot of air rifles and things, but what is it that, that, that makes you look at this? What is it that makes you go, oh, um, what is it? Just pop a, a, a comment in there and
It's not obvious at first. That's what I like. Yeah, Robert, you're absolutely right. And you're right, everybody. Yes, it's the light. <clears throat> it is the light. Mel Port, you're here and you commented. How did you do that? I saw our Mel Port this afternoon because he has a shop and I went in and saw him and said, can you cut me a key, please? And he said, I never comment because I don't know how to log into my YouTube. And there he is. He's just commented. Caught you out, Mr. Port. <clears throat> By the way, I think I bought you the wrong keys to cut. Never mind. It's the light. The light will make or break a picture. It is the number one most important thing in photography. And, you know, Phil, this light is just gorgeous. It's moody. It's interesting. It's bringing out the textures in the, pal in the pellets. It's bringing the textures down the side of the gun. We know where to look. The light is telling us. We're looking <clears throat> at the grip where you hold the, the air rifle. Um, those little hints of light coming off the scope. We don't need to see the whole scope. A lot of that scope's lost in darkness, but the way those highlights are just touching it, um, I think it's a really nice, beautifully done, accomplished picture. And it's the light that has made it do that. Yeah, technically, <clears throat> it's sharp, it's in focus, the exposure's great, got it, you've exposed, and sort of let the highlights sit at around about the mid gray part. Um, but this is what makes it work. Really great shot. I'm sorry it isn't further on in this challenge, but um, great shot, Phil. Great shot. And this is the thing for everyone else to look at. If you're struggling a bit with understanding light, this is what's meant by qualities of light, seeing light, of recognizing where highlights and shadows fall to make something interesting. Look at the shadows. You can see that actually there are two light source is going on. Look down at the bottom around the pellet tin. You see there are two sort of slightly overlapping shadows. <clears throat> Nonetheless, I would say the one coming, one is coming towards the camera, but that's what's causing the shadow where your thumb would go around the grip. Um, really interesting stuff. Again, if you're interested, go take a look at my masterclass because there is so much stuff about light in there. It, it isn't a beginner's course. It isn't an, an advanced course. It's, there is always more to learn. I think the whole beginner, intermediate, advanced thing is kind of nuts, to be honest, because we are all those things. If you put me with Gareth Harford, he specializes in photographing fast moving objects. He is a genius at it. That is what he does all day and every day. Compared to Gareth Harford, I am a complete beginner. Um, compared to say someone who's just bought their first camera I'm probably off 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 through the stratosphere somewhere with my ability to photograph movement to them it's it's a comparison thing we are all beginners and and we are all experts and masterclass kind of crosses a very wide range of things go and try it get a free sample see what you think Dan Drummond we know you already you are a very accomplished photographer and I get this it's a beautifully beautifully executed bit of food photography and that sushi is one of your passions. I completely, completely get that. It's a beautiful shot. It's beautifully lit. But again, Dan, I'm going to say it's a beautifully shot, beautifully composed, perfectly lit and exposed, nicely colored picture of sushi. And I get it. It's, it's something that is one of your food passions. I had some sushi for supper while I was sitting here waiting to, to rock and roll and get going. It wasn't as good as what I'm looking at here. The thing is, is your passion for it. That's, that's the piece that's missing. And that's why this was such a hard challenge to show yours or someone else's passion for something. Robert Warner just said, we need to see someone eating it. Yeah, possibly someone enjoying it, someone savoring it, something about it, or maybe someone making it, maybe the way someone is touching it as they're creating the sushi, rolling it or slicing it or cutting it or preparing it. That's the hard part. This was a really, really tough challenge. And I noticed we didn't have quite so many entries, you know, quite, quite a few less entries this time, <clears throat> probably because it is a tough one. And, you know, again, that's why I totally salute everybody who gave this one a go. Beautiful shot, Dan. I think we've got some great passion or potential for passion going on here, Gary. <clears throat> you know, your one-year-old grandson and, and your cockapoo dog. Um, unfortunately, I think there is room for the passion here, but it didn't quite happen in this picture. This is one of those things that... Um, 
again, depends on little decisive moments and, and the amount of time spent. Never work with children and animal. That's animals. That's what they say. And that is so true because it can take forever. Um, I know that you put so much work into this stuff, Gary, having seen it before. The thing that's missing is that link between the dog and um, your grandson. Uh, also, your light's a little bit tricky. It's all coming down and from slightly behind. You look at your grandson's expression. It, he's kind of looking off to one side, and we have no detail, really, in your cockapoo's face. Um, it's one of those things, I think, if there is an interaction between the two. You know, we really got that your grandson loves this dog. I think that, that really could have helped. Um, but yeah, good effort, you know, and thank you again for giving it your best shot. And let's face it, Gary, you know, you don't know what you're doing. You do know what you're up to. For those of you who don't know, Gary beat me in a photo competition. So and when we did the Alabare challenge and shared it with uh, that particular charity organization, Joss or Yoss, I probably should say, yeah, I get it. This is someone's passion. Um, to do something. So this is your daughter's passion for rock climbing. And, you know, this just amazes me how people do this, how they, how they climb around vertically overhanging rocks. She must be so strong. Absolutely amazing. Um, I think it's a great attempt at photographing someone's passion. Forgive me for saying this, but it's kind of inelegant I think is the only way I can I can sort of say maybe if you could have been the other side of her I think you'd have caught that that passion she is <laughs> do you mean she is inelegant how funny <laughs> I was more thinking of the angle at which we are viewing your daughter um I just think it may be from the other side. You know, if you catch her face, we've got a chin, you know, her face upside down. We can see her hands hanging on tight and maybe the expression on her face as she is, she is you know, in straining and heaving and hanging on. I mean, that girl is so strong. I think those are the things to watch for. If you could, you couldn't get around the other side. Okay, got it. Um, I know these things are not always possible, but again, you have captured your daughter doing something that she is passionate about. Um, and, uh, you know, thank you for entering. Thank you for entering. Forgive me, by the way, guys, so now and then sometimes when, you, when I'm sort of pausing and distracted, it's because I'm watching comments on the other screen because I can't see them on this one. Um, what else have we got going on here? Let's have a quick look at this one from Mary Sue. Um, your passion is travel. And I think... Yeah, I kind of get where you're going. Passion in a still life is not an easy thing to do. And this is quite, what's the word? I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, it's a very current thing, isn't it? Travel is mostly locked right now. Uh, it's not something we can do very easily. Um, and I think it's a really good idea. I do like your idea, the passport and the stamps and... and travel being locked and all that sort of stuff. Technically, yeah, exposure spot on. I think maybe some light would have helped a bit. The, the light sort of coming from above and to the left a bit, Mary Sue. Maybe if it was coming towards a little bit, I think it would help. Backlight is always great. Something, remember how, oh, forgive me, my brain is half dead um, at the moment the the uh, air rifle shot you know imagine a little pool of light possibly around the padlock with little hints of of the passport and the stamps going on around it i think then you'd start to get into some really really cool stuff but it is a nice composition it's it's nicely put together well exposed and i like your idea as to how you could portray something that's a passion maybe i got it because travel is a passion of mine too did it what about everyone else let's just throw this one open guys who got it when you saw this? Did you did you look at this and go, yeah, I get it. Yeah, travel is somebody's passion and, and it's locked and you can't do it. And there's kind of frustration there. Did anyone else get it? Just a Y on an N, a yes or a no. Ash, welcome back, Ash. I saw you just say you haven't been here for a long time. You know, some people got it, some didn't. And don't be afraid if you didn't or you did. It's, you know, just pop something in the comments because 
It's always interesting. We always interpret things differently, all of us. Yeah, so we're probably looking at this, we've probably got about a 50-50 split going on here. Um, I'm exhausted, Ash. There are a lot of things happening in my life right now, which I'm not going into right this minute, but it's kind of a little bit tiring. Anyway, moving swiftly on from that one. Got it. We got about a 50-50 split as to who got it and who didn't. I think possibly a bit of light, just sort of highlighting, glancing off the padlock, a bit more moody and highlighting the thing. Maybe, maybe it would have helped. I don't know. But great idea. Great idea. Where else have we got to? Where are we now? We're getting towards eight o'clock, so I'm gonna start heading into the winners and runners up fairly soon. Um, what do we got here? Here we go now. I thought, Neil, this one was kind of interesting. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, this is your wife in the garden growing things. I think what we've got is yes, it's it's very it's well exposed and all that kind of stuff. I think what we needed was possibly a bit more space. And if she's working on the plants in her garden, maybe if you could have shot through the plants, whether you could have parted and got your camera through there, so you're kind of looking through the plants, maybe capturing her expression at a moment when she's excited with something. Um, you know, when, when maybe, I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure what these plants are. I'm, I'm, I'm not great with plants and things any more than I am DIY and decorating. Um, but kind of looking through the plants, you know, if she's picking a crop or, or doing something like that, you know, you know, like when you pick a, a, a nice fruit and she's sort of like, you know, oh, that's a gorgeous one. That little moment of excitement um, would probably help. Moose Harper in the greenhouse, not possible. Okay, got it. You see, I didn't even know you were in a greenhouse here. Um, I can just see it now. Yes, yeah, forgive me. I can just see there is an aluminium window thing, I think, just above her head. Um, or maybe seeing if you could turn her sideways so she's more sort of coming through the plants. Or if those plants are against the window, could you have gone outside and shot in through? That sort of thing. I don't know. Those are just some thoughts there. Um, but yeah, great effort. I get it. I get it. Technically, well exposed, well put together shot. I think, yeah, a little bit more space around, maybe a slightly wider lens could have helped. I thought this, Lorraine, I thought this was a very interesting image. I just liked it a lot. Um, and it drew my attention because I like this kind of slightly quirky stuff. I like the light on the building that is being reflected <coughs> in those windows. Uh, it's kind of monochromatic, isn't it? It's, it's I don't, you know, it doesn't look to me like a spot color image. It, it just looks like it's a very gray, black and gray with, with that color reflecting in it. I think it's a really interesting shot. You said uh, a result of one of your passions, which is driving around, keeping an eye out for possible shots. <clears throat> um, I think it's a great shot. I get it, that is your passion, but again, what, what, what we're, we're not quite getting here is the passion coming from the picture. Very hard thing to do. As I say, I would strongly recommend, um, go have a look at uh, Estras Suarez, Estras M. Suarez. Google him, have a look at some of his pictures. He's very good at, at passionate pictures. You may remember some of you, the, the photograph when he gave us a talk, when he was uh, in the house covering a story for, I don't remember which paper, uh, and he's in the house with the casket, with the coffin, and the family grieving in Mexico. And, you know, there's strong, strong emotion there. It's, um, I'm not suggesting all of you go gate crash your funeral. Please don't think I am. But it's interesting to go have a look, see some of the stuff that he does. Um, one more. What should we go have a look at here? Jonathan Kimberley, <clears throat> you have a passion, which is engineering and electronics and all that sort of thing. I get it, and this is an interesting sort of a thing. It's a, I don't know what it is. I'm not very good at this. It looks like it's a, it's a, it's a, a USB connection of some sort and a power supply. I think what, what we need here is you'd need to get more macro and probably, you know, so that's like a lot closer. Maybe be really careful with the light and sort of these sorts of things need side light and shadows and things to really make them work. And often, I have found very clear straight sort of 
dynamic composition with lots of uprights, lots of verticals and things. Um, good effort, and again, I get it. It's your passion for engineering and uh, electronics, etc. Um, I think, yeah, maybe if you could maybe come in a bit closer onto just a part of this. I'm really interested by those little peg things sticking out. I don't know if anybody wants to do this thing and just sort of try cropping it a little bit tighter. So we're losing, instead of seeing the whole unit, we're kind of coming in tighter onto different bits of it. And I think as you sort of move that around, you can probably see some, some slightly more interesting bits and pieces going on around the shot. Yeah, there's quite a nice one here. I wish I could see, I wish I could show you what I'm seeing in, in my eyes, but I can't. Great effort, and thanks, Jonathan, for giving it a go. That's what this is all about. If you don't give it a go, you never know. So let's just scroll back up, and then I think we will jump into having a look. <coughs> I do think that's funny, Emma. Our winners and runners up you know as you can see there were some great ideas and i get people's passions here you know um i really do i thought this was a really nice idea evelyn by the way your passion for reading books and i totally get it i think nobody could could miss that you have a passion for reading books um technically there's a couple of little problems i think you probably know what they are you know you're not quite sharp there's a bit of movement going on there i like the way you you giving it an expression though, I think that's quite cool. Maybe you could have been a little bit more subtle with the books, it's kind of like, I read books! <laughs> Maybe just a little bit more subtle, but I like the way you've composed it, I like the way you've thought about it, the way you've created a frame and a frame, the way you put that little gap. You put a lot of thought and effort into this, and for that I absolutely salute you. And you have given us a clear idea of something that you are passionate about. I think that is, Really, very clever. So, would anyone like us to move into um, our winners and runners up? This was a picture I thought was really interesting, by the way. I'm just going to quickly shout it out, Raphael. Um, you know, someone who's totally passionate about their balcony, aren't they? And I think this is really cool. I don't know if you could have got a bit more of the building in if that was the only one, because then you really are saying, you know, this person is passionate and we know what they're passionate about because all the other balconies have got nothing going on in them. Great idea. I think it's a really great shot, a really great image. Right, we had a couple of yeses. Shall we get on to our winners and runners up? So let's see what we can do. There are some great pictures in here as well. Look at this shot from, you know, John Colony. This beautiful, beautiful um, bird. And um, forgive me if I haven't shouted out on other people's. There are many great shots here. Look at the passion going on here. Forgive me, Philip, if I haven't shouted out on everyone. Um, let's go take a look at our winners and runners up. Now I have to be very careful here because I think when I move things around, I don't want you to see who they are yet. There we go. Because <laughs> you'll see them if I am sharing my screen with the wire car. So I'm just gonna put myself back. Here I come. There we go. And now I can set this up so we can have a look at tonight's winners and runners up in the Passion Challenge. So let me get this shot set up and ready to rock and roll. It just takes me a minute to get things lined up, and ready to go. Here we are. So our first one that I wanted to bring up as one of our runners up in the Passion Challenge is Beverly Devine. I mean, how can you not see the passion in those eyes? I think that is a really, really great bit of passion that you have captured there. It is um, a very, very, very powerful picture. The eyes absolutely just capture and draw you in. And, you know, looking at what you said in your comments, you know, you asked them if you could take a few shots and they said, yeah, cool. Don't be afraid of people, people because they're great. Um, <coughs> Emma Rawls, <laughs> you're very welcome. Um, yeah, it is a, a really great picture. 
Initially, I have to say this was my, oh, it's that one. I just got it. Yeah, it's my sort of picture. Why didn't I actually give you the winning slot? Looking at it, forgive me if I'm wrong. I could be, but I'm just going to be honest. It looks to me like there is just a little bit of a hint of a filter or something going on um, around the guy's hair and, and the top of his head. I don't know, maybe you shot it with a phone and it was too contrast and it couldn't quite cope. I'm not sure, Beverly, forgive me if I am wrong. But it looks to me as though possibly you've done a little bit of fiddly, as your father, as my old mentor used to say, in uh, Photoshop or Lightroom or something. And I don't think it needed it. I don't think it needed it. I think it is strong enough. Maybe a little bit of lightning around her eyes because she's, you know, the most beautiful eyes, aren't they? And the way she's looking at you. But I'm not sure it needed it if you've done post-production on it. And it looks to me as though you have. So forgive me if you haven't. It is a really powerful picture. And nonetheless, I love it. And of course, I'm only saying what I think. It's only my opinion. And we all know. Opinions are not necess necessarily real. Great shot. Our next runner-up. <laughs> uh, this really, really grabbed my attention straight away. And it is from our resident New Zealand early riser, Jane Barnes. Um, you're always here, Jane. You're always up at five in the morning and your commitment to your photography and what you're doing i think is is an inspiration to everybody really you put in so much work and look how much work you put into this and it's the body language look at look at the mood look at the body position is this you jane is this a selfie is this someone else please tell us because i know you're here um i'm just really intrigued is this a selfie or is this someone else but the positioning of the way the body is standing and that light painting going on behind creating those beautiful folds i just think it's <clears throat> a very powerful picture and it's just so beautifully executed it's not easy to get those folds of light with that light painting which i'm pretty sure is what you've done i don't know is it a light bar come on jane no it's a model okay cool um, but yeah, I think it's a really great shot. I think it's a very powerful shot. And, and to get those, those beautiful bits of light painting going on through the back, you've got it absolutely right. Um, and a little bit of light spilling around the cave and onto the rocks. Great shot, Jane. And I really got a feeling of passion. That's what it's all about, isn't it? A feeling, an emotion, a feeling, a passion. Um, what that passion is, I don't know. I feel it's for dancing whatever does anyone else agree or disagree i think there is a strong feeling of passion coming out of that i think it's a great shot congratulations um thank you jane now then glenn just look away a minute moira i love this portrait um i really love this portrait uh i'm just trying to look is this oh, this is your mate jim with his passion um, yeah, I get it. This is a portrait of someone with something that's important to them. Whether it's a motorcycle or not is irrelevant. The light and the way you photograph this is really, really beautiful. <clears throat> I like his expression. Um, I really do. Glyn, suck it up. It's all right. It's a picture of a man with his motorbike. It's not a picture of a motorbike. Um, it's just beautiful light. Look at the light on your mate Jim's face. It is absolutely spot on, it's perfect. And the look of pride, his look of, yeah, this is mine, you know? I, I, I think it's a really, really nicely done portrait. We don't see that many portraits in, in our PLD and I think it's a really great shot, Moira. Um, congratulations, I think you have captured a portrait with passion. Technically, of course, yes, it is spot on. We've got beautiful light. Look at those highlights and shadows and, and all the rest of it and that's going on in there. Little hints of what's happening in the back of the garage, the shed, the steps, or the, the, it's either a step ladder or shelves or something going on there. Little hints. Uh, I think it's a really great shot. Well done. So 
Our next runner-up is somebody who has been with PLD pretty much from day one. And George, you have always made us laugh. But what I love about this picture is, yeah, you are completely open that you love dressing up in your dresses and all this kind of stuff. And I just think this is such a fun picture because this is really is you showing who you are with your passion. And it's a great documentary shot. It's, it, this really is a selfie in the truest sense of the world, in my opinion. <clears throat> your passion for your outfits and all the rest of it. By the way, mate, you've got some awesome legs. I know many women who kill to have legs like those. Um, I think it's a great shot. I, I really do. I think um, you can only enjoy it. Look at the expression on your face. It's just like really great fun. Your collection of outfits and clothes. This is, yeah, I would say it's the ultimate selfie. Uh, and thank you for sharing that. I, I just thought, yeah, and, and maybe I'm kind of biased because you've been around the group for a long time. Many of us here, of course, know you. Um, and I just think it's a great picture. And yeah, this is a slice of George, no question. Um, congratulations, thank you for entering it. I think you always make a smile and I think this is a really great personal photograph. Next, we're gonna move on to just a little bit of passion for one man and his dog. Um, Crystal? Yeah, we see quite a lot of your pictures and, you know, thank you for joining in all these challenges, uh, both crystals. Um, but it's just the look on this guy's face and the dog's face. It's this interaction between the two. I like your composition. I know it's in quite tight, but I kind of like it. I like that arm. And, you know, anybody who's got a dog, you know what it's like when the dog jumps into your lap and then just licky all over your face. My, my brother's little dog, Lottie, just occasionally comes and sort of jumps up on me and puts a little paws there and lick all over the face. I think it's really nicely done. I like the framing within the window. I love the position of the arm and just capturing that moment of, you know, this guy who loves his dog and his dog is so passionate about him and that kind of you kind of you know like it and you don't i think it's a great shot crystal there is definitely a bit of passion going on there hey crystal you're here so you lucked out on timing this is a grab shot is it this is a bit of sort of street photography you saw something going on and you grabbed it please let us know because i'm always interested because this sort of stuff is you know what it takes being aware of our surroundings and the environment of being ready for something if and when it happens. Just having a look to see if Crystal gets a moment to respond. There is always a delay between me saying something, you hearing it, and then you getting the chance to send it back. So I'm just holding on a second. Uh, and the great luck that the car has such a fun color too. I totally agree. <clears throat> I totally agree, HK. That, that one sort of color framing all the way around, it, it just kind of works, doesn't it? It's like a window in this color. Uh, yes, yeah, street photography, green van. Yeah, so you just happen to be there. Grab the moment. Congratulations. So that brings us, you were watching and waiting for something fun to happen. Sorry, I just saw Crystal again. Um, <clears throat> and this is, yeah, it's, so it's, it's what Estra calls a stakeout. You see something and you think, hmm, that could be interesting. Then you wait to see what happens. And ready to go should it happen. And, and, and it pays off. Great shot. So our winner <clears throat> in our PLD Passion Challenge, I so wish you were all here in reality. I go, who do you think it is? Who do you think it is? But this one just grabbed me and Emma. Uh, I just think this absolutely screams passion and excitement and fun, Stuart Anthony. I think this is such a cool picture. I just want it on the wall, I really do. I think it is so well put together. I think it is a great shot. <clears throat> it just captures love and passion for, you know, this amazing world we live in. And if you haven't ever ripped your clothes off and run naked into the sea, I strongly recommend you do it because it is a wonderful feeling. Stuart, you've composed this perfectly. It's great fun. I don't know if this is you doing a selfie. 
If you're here, please tell me it is, because I just think it's great. <clears throat> but let's just pull it apart for a moment. Look at the layers we've got here. We've got a beach layer, we've got a water layer, the sea layer, and we've got the sky layer. Look how this is composed. This is composed so, so carefully. Um, Glenn, you need to do it. First, get yourself a motorbike, mate. Ride down to the beach, run in naked, preferably on a bank holiday when there's lots of people there. You'll love it. Um, <laughs> you're getting some great comments. But look, let's just analyze this composition. Look how straight that horizon is. The three levels, beach, sea, sky. Perfectly straight horizon. Also, look where our guy is. Uh, it is me. Please don't put me on your wall. Stuart, you have my absolute admiration. That is just, again, one of the best selfies ever. With you and George doing selfies like this, I think that's awesome. <clears throat> but I just love it. You know, look at, look at the position. Look how Stuart has positioned himself within the frame. He's quite small. That gives us that sense of, you know, the smallness of a human being compared to being in the ocean. It's one of those things about swimming naked in the sea. It's just like, you feel so small. I don't know what it is, just not having a pair, not having a cosy on. It just makes a difference. <clears throat> it's fun. It's happy. It's got a great feeling. And I think it's just a really well put together picture. I think it's up there. Um, you know, as one of those things that it's just fun to put on the wall and, and great shot, Stuart. What more can I say? I think it's a load of fun. What did Glenn say? I can see Crystal having a laugh. <laughs> I can't see what it is. I, I'll have to go back because I don't want to waste your time while I'm trying to read things. I do it too slowly. Um, but either way, great shot. And I'm guessing it's something to do with Glyn riding his motorcycle down to the beach to go for a bit of skinny dipping. <clears throat> so, let's come back to here and uh, say thank you to everybody who has entered the Passion, passion Challenge. We've got something which is, we're simplifying the next one quite a lot. Uh, you've got a little bit more time to do the next one as well, but it is still, we're back on the normal PLD format. Thank you for letting me hijack PLD with PosiPix to test it for us. There is a PosiPix competition running, and I think in the next day or two, we will have the next few months of PosiPix competitions set up. If any of you want to enter those, you are, it would be brilliant. You are supporting our friend Giles Dooley's Legacy of War if you do that. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who is still making small donations to keep this going. If anybody wants to buy everyone a sticker tonight before we go, I know, I think it was Jane did this earlier and I really appreciate that because, yeah, things are tight. And um, I know I've said for months we're looking at ways to keep PLD going because trust me, it so isn't paying its way now. Um, <clears throat> I've been saying for months we're looking at ways to do things, but mm, there's been some other priorities. If you think about it, most of my business was taking people on overseas trips and workshops, but of course they disappeared. So there's been some other things we're having to do to keep that boat afloat. So yeah, we are going to come up with something for PLD and I'm hoping when we next meet, uh, I will probably have a little meeting with everyone in the group to sort of have a little chat about what we're going to do. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you all for being here. You guys are the stalwarts of PLD. You are the ones who really, really support it, who keep it alive, who keep it going. You are the community that is behind it. And uh, I'm not going to let that just frizzle up and go away. Um, so be well, take care of yourselves. Enjoy the next challenge. I'm going to go put it live on the website and you will have an email. Those of you who are signed up to the uh, newsletter just to sort of let you know what's going on. Anyway, I'll stop waffling. Kevin, you're a gentleman, sir. I totally appreciate that. Thank you very much indeed. So <clears throat> I'm going to move on anyway and uh, say good night or good morning if you're in New Zealand like Jane is or wherever you are in the world. Again, thank you for being here. I'll see you next time.